this is going to be the first of kind of a two-part uh, set of videos to talk about state management using Ionic and React Framework. Um, this video is part of the series on learning to build an app using Ionic Framework and React.js. One of the questions that I see often very times and kind of like a fundamental problem that I want to just jump to quickly is managing state between two tabs and to put it more bluntly what you see a lot of people ask is how do I get a value that's in one tab over to the other tab or how when I update a value in this tab when I switch to the other tab I don't see the changes there. React offers a, a bunch of different ways to handle it in this first video, I'm going to show you how to manage it um, using the Context API. Um, we're going to use a couple of hooks along the way. Um, but I think to start everything off first, I want to just give you a quick overview of how the tabs work inside React.js. So the reason why I'm going to run through this is I'm not going to take you through the whole process of installing Ionic, running Create, um, the tab app and then kind of step to it because there's a lot of other stuff that you get in that and so what I've done here for you is I just have a very simple application that has two tabs, tab one, tab two and then it has some buttons in it that we're going to use later for updating the values in this tab so that and then you'll be able to see the change in value in the other tab um, and we're going to use it with, con with the uh, context API. But first, let me quickly walk through what we have here. Um, so we'll, we'll start right at the top. So what we have is we have our top level app uh, component. And what we've done here is I've, I've tried to add some comments along the way. Um, we have um, the Ionic React router that wraps the whole thing. So everything is wrapped in the router. And then inside of the router, we have the tabs. And so that the tabs wrap everything. Um, and then inside of that, we have the ion router outlet, which basically is this is where the tabs are going to be drawn here in the router outlet. And then right below the router outlet, this is important, on the outside of the router outlet is the tabs. So that's the tab bars that you see across the bottom with the buttons and the references to the appropriate tabs. So what we have here is we have a route for each one of the tabs. Um, uh, and a specific path that's associated with the route. So we have the route. When the browser or when the browser sees the slash tab one, we want to load the component tab one. When it sees slash tab two, we want to load um, the component tab two. And then what I've added also here, because I see this really often, is like how do we handle a detail page on a tab? So it's, it's pretty straightforward. What we want to do here is we want to have um, tab detail um, be a detail or a child of tab two. So we just have slash tab two slash tab detail, and we tell it the component that we want it to load, and that's the behavior that we get. The other question that I see asked a couple of times is like, why do you have to put this default route in here? So the reason you need this default route is when the application first starts up, and you see on the top here, um, when we have nothing set, we just hit enter. We want the app to go to a specific tab. Um, let's say I had multiple tabs. Let's switch this to tab two. See, and then now when the app starts up, oh, I hope this works. It's going to default the tab two as a starting tab. So that's really all this is doing. It's just setting which tab um, the app's going to start up on and view first. Okay, so that's what this render redirect is doing. Okay, and then down here on the bottom, we have the buttons, and each one of the buttons have a name that's associated with it. I've been trying to understand exactly what is the value of this tab value here, so if someone knows, please let me know. Um, but what I've done here is I've set, just set the reference so that for a tab one button, when you click it, it sets the route that we want to see to tab one, and then on tab two, we set the route to slash tab two, and we see the tab that you want to see. Now, um, in some other videos, I'm going to show you how to handle, because I've seen this question asked a few times, you know, what do I do if I have a login screen that I want to show first and then I want to show the tabs? Or what do I do if I want to do a side menu and then show the tabs? Um, now there's a complete project that has all that in it already um, um, that you can check out. I'll include the link in the uh, video. But I'm going to I'm gonna like work my way up to that so that you're understanding everything that's done as, we, as we've gotten to it. 
So now we've discussed kind of each, how the uh, router is working and how we're running the two tabs. Let's take a look at how the tabs are actually laid out. So as you can see here, I'm saying load component tab one, and tab one and tab two are pretty much laid out the same. So let's take a look at tab one. So we, here we are inside of tab one. It's a simple React functional component. We are using all the Ionic components here. So we have the Ionic page, header, toolbar, title. Pretty straightforward. Um, we're using the class name, I mean the class Ionic padding to get the padding around the outside of the, uh, the content here. We have set our title. And then we have two placeholder buttons that we're going to use later on. Um, that's about it. Tab 2 is a little bit different because if we click over to tab 2, what we see here is tab 2 has this detail page functionality where you go to the detail page that's associated to tab 2. Notice here if I switch back to tab 1 and then go back to tab 2, it still stays on tab 2. Um, there's a workaround that how you can address this so that when they leave the tab and come back, you can have it come back to the, um, actually the home state of this tab 2. I um, mean, something maybe I'll touch on a little bit later. But for now, I'm really just focusing on the basic concepts of how to get a tab application up and running and how to access a detail page in a tab. So if we look inside of tab two, what we can see is it looks very similar um, to tab one. Everything's the same. The only difference here is this code. Let me um, clean this up a bit so it's a little bit easier to read. All right, so we have our ion button. And then our button has a click, and on the click we want it to put the we, um, we want it to push this new route and have that route render. Um, you see, I have history here. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can pass it in as a print. You can pass it in and pull it off as a property. But I think the simplest way now is to take advantage of this uh, hook called Use History um, from uh, from React Router, which will give you access to this history. Um, property that you need and then based off the history you can push, you can pop, you can replace. And so this is just how I've solved it here. I use the use history hook to get access to the history object and then I tell the history object push this route onto the navigation stack. And then if we go back to um, app TS, we can see this is the route that we want and then based on the route it takes us to tab detail. So let's click on the button now and go to tab detail. See on the um, up here at the top how it's actually, the path has changed to tab detail. We have our nice back button, we have the title, and then we're on a tab detail. Well, so let's look at that page and see a couple interesting things that we have here. So um, what's different here is we wrap, and it's important to do is inside the toolbar, we say we want in, this slot, in the first slot here, you want to add an ion back button. Add, adding the ion back button, it manages the whole navigation state for you, and it'll give you the nice arrow, and when clicking on it, it knows where it's supposed to go. So we add this up on the top. We have our title. And then it's just like an, a regular page. So that was kind of a very quick and brief run through of my uh, intro app here that gets you set up. Um, it's an app. App context, we have our router. Our router has our tabs. And then in the tabs, we have the outlet where we actually want to draw the content here. And then we have the tab bar, which appears on the bottom. The tab bar has specific paths associated for when the buttons are clicked, all of which are um, accounted for up here in the um, router. We have our additional path to show the details. And then we went through each one of the pages. Tab one is pretty straightforward. Tab two is structured the exact same. The only difference is here, we're actually using this use history hook, um, this use history hook to get access to the history and then do the push to get us to the specific detail page. What we have here in the detail page is the use of this ion back button positioned in the start slot so that we can get this nice uh, action. Also, the other thing that's amazing is you get all the beautiful animation out of, out of the box and all the page transition. Um, so we had the back button set up and then we get the page. So I'm gonna stop right there. Like I said, I'm gonna focus on like short, concise videos. Um, this is the end of this first video. Leave your thoughts, comments, if I should add more detail, less detail. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. And then I'm going to drop the next video, which will actually start to add the content. So you can see how we're setting a value here and then seeing the value on the other two pages, which is the how do I manage state between two tabs. Thank you very much. Um, please like and subscribe. Follow me Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Aaron K. Saunders. And have a good evening. Bye now.